Ever since Nvidia announced ray tracing features in its Turing graphics cards, it's been a pretty hot topic of debate for many gamers. That's why I've started looking at ray tracing in games, comparing them side by side with ray tracing on and off, and discuss whether ray tracing is worth using and also worth buying a very expensive graphics card for. In this video, I'm going to analyze the ray tracing in control and show a side by side comparison with ray tracing on and off. A reminder to also check out the first video that I made on ray tracing looking at Cyberpunk 2077 and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Now if you like this video make sure to hit that like button also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and we also have a discord channel if you want to join us for more gaming discussion. It's quite clear from early on that controls visuals are impressive regardless if you have ray tracing on or off. However, as impressive as the standard visuals are, Control has easily the best implementation of ray tracing I've seen so far in a game. This is because it's helped by a number of choices that developers have made. One of the most important is the visual art style of the game. Control is set inside what the game calls the oldest house, which uses a brutalist architecture style to an unnerving psychological effect. Color palette and material choices also play a part in this as well, allowing maximum effect when ray tracing is turned on. Control has five different ray tracing effects, and I've tried to pick out some examples of each one. Its most impressive features are its ray tracing reflections and transparent reflections. Control also features indirect diffuse lighting, ray trace shadows, and finally an interesting feature ray tracing debris, which for the life of me, I can't tell the difference with it on or off. Unlike Cyberpunk 2077, where the performance completely tanked with all ray tracing turned on, I was able to play the game quite comfortably at around 50 frames per second with everything turned on ultra and a high ray tracing preset. The PC I'm using is an i9-10900K with a Gigabyte RTX 3070 gaming OC. You can also turn DLSS on to boost performance if you feel like you're struggling a little bit. However, in the recorder clips, there is no DLSS used because I didn't want that to affect the image quality. The first thing I noticed, and what I think everyone else will notice, is vastly more dramatic reflections used when ray tracing is turned on. Generally speaking, many of these reflective surfaces, such as walls and floors, are able to reflect surrounding objects in the environment to a much higher level of accuracy in geometry than standard rasterization. Not only that, but in control, reflections are used to a stunning effect that gives many of the walls and floors that shiny waxed car showroom look. Whether that's accurate to what happens in real life is arguable, but it does definitely give control an initial wow factor. Notice that the window panes here as we're running through the level gives a reflection of the flooring, while in the non-ray trace version the window gives a frosted window pane look, which is a completely different interpretation of the situation. You can see this more clearly when the main character Jesse is stationary and the windows in the ray trace version pick up all of the objects in the scene. Notice the slightly different interpretation of the light reflection on the wall as well. Here in this shot, you can see how once again the ray trace reflections give a mirror-like quality finish to the image compared to the non-ray trace version. Ray trace reflections aren't on every surface though, as Karen hardware can't handle the complete scene being ray traced, so the ray tracing is very selective. Here you can see this bench with ray tracing, but otherwise most of the objects in the scene do not have ray tracing. Sometimes when there is a significant light source in the scene, the difference can be quite stark. The ray tracing effects are really impressive in motion as all the objects in the scene are replicated in the reflection. Notice how the puddle on the floor is far clearer and more obvious in the ray trace version than the non-ray trace version. Here's another quick look at the puddles while the main character is stationary. As we saw earlier, transparent reflections make a big difference to the final image. Here in the non-ray traced image, the curtains on the other side are far more obvious. Here's another example where you cannot even see the main character's reflection at all in the non-ray traced image. As we saw in Cyberpunk 2077, the reflections can happen in various types of material, and here you can see a far sharper reflection in the ray traced scene in what appears to be a metallic surface. 
Ray traced indirect diffuse lighting is a little harder to spot, but that's because the effect is more subtle than reflections. Notice here in this scene with ray tracing that the texture on the wall is more lit, whereas in the non-ray trace scene, the color of the texture of the wall appears more even. Here in this dark corridor, it's almost impossible to spot, so it's easiest when the scene is more lit. Like for example here in this meeting room where it appears brighter in the ray trace scene and you can see the difference between the wooden cupboard doors. Ray trace shadows are almost identical between the ray trace scene and the non ray trace scene in control. The description in the settings suggests that the ray trace contact shadows should be more accurate, though the majority of the time it was very hard to discern any differences. In this scene, there is a very slight difference as the ray trace version depicted vertical blinds with shadows that were less sharp. The ray trace version does tend to blend the red color of the flooring better than the non ray trace version. This can be seen a little bit more clearly in the next shot where the ray trace shadow of the table is more red. Finally, let's talk about ray trace debris, or rather, let me show you what ray trace debris looks like, and you can tell me whether you can see much of a difference or not. And I'm going to run it in slow motion to see if you can spot the difference. I apologize for it not being the exact same flammable container and the exact same angle. It doesn't really feel like the debris looks ray traced as most particles are too small to tell the difference, and at the same time it's hard to tell if these particles had much effect on the environment. The game has some pretty impressive particle physics, but most of it does not seem to have anything to do with ray tracing debris. Just one quick tip, most of these ray tracing effects seem to have a cumulative effect on the frame rate, so if you're looking for maximum performance but still want to turn on ray tracing, you can turn off ray traced indirect diffuse lighting, shadows and debris as it affects the look of the game the least, so you could easily save yourself 20-30% to performance by turning those off. Alright, that's going to be it for this one. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one.